Hi, what's up guys? Welcome to another cool Projection 3D video tutorial. Today we will not be creating projections, we will do something different instead. So what we'll do is we will remove unwanted objects from the video footage using Projection 3D. So if you're ready, let's get started. Okay, so let's create a new comp right away. We'll make it 1080p with 25 frames per second. Okay, let's drag the footage in here. Let's make it fit the comp. And let's make it something like six seconds long. That should be enough. Now I'll trim the comp to work area. I'll select the footage, click layer and pre-compose. Okay, let's see. So in order to make this scene kind of romantic and wild in a way, we want to delete those people from the frame. As if this couple are the only people who know about this place and they want to enjoy the view alone together. All right, and so the first thing we need to do is track camera using the 3D camera tracker. You'll find it in Effect, Perspective, 3D Camera Tracker, or by clicking Animation and then Tracking Camera. But first we must hide this couple under the mask so that we don't get any movement from them. Like right now we only need to track the movement of our camera. So let's do that. Okay, now we have to animate the mask. So I'll add a key on the mask path. So I'll change mask mode to subtract and adjust the mask. And so on and so forth. Up until the end of the video, just hiding them entirely. Okay, let's see. Great, everything seems to be okay. I'll select the footage, go to Effect, Perspective, 3D Camera Tracker, and then I'll just wait for a while. Okay, it's done. Now we can delete the mask we don't need it anymore. Now guys, we need to show the tool where the ground plane is. So to do this, I'll select a few track points from here closer to our working area. Select this point, hold shift, and select some more. Great, as you can see, the 3D camera tracker has created a temporary surface from these points, and the circle shows that it is oriented properly. If your circle is not oriented correctly, try selecting other track points. So then right click and choose set ground plan and origin. And also guys, don't forget to check average error and advanced. Just make sure that the error values are not high. As you can see, my value is 0.32 pixels. That's a, a minor deviation. So everything seems to be okay. Let's go ahead and create camera. Great. Now I'll select the camera I created and the footage and create projection. We need one projection copy. So choose one and click OK. Double click projection scene one. I'll unhide hidden layers. Then I'll select the video footage with our projection image. Then right click, time, and I'll freeze frame it. So this way we get ourselves a still image instead of a video. And that's what we need. So let's go on. I'll select projection image, layer, open layer, select clone stamp tool, and I'll erase other people.
like this. Hide those layers. Okay, so now let's get back to composition window. And add a plain primitive. I'll increase the scale. As you can see, only a couple remain in the foreground. The rest have disappeared. This is because we erased them from the frame inserted into the projector. Now we need to mask unwanted areas. We will not leave this massive plane. We only need those places with people. We're not going to project this entire scene. We only need our projection where we need to hide something. Okay, I'll enable this. Now let's hide masks. Now you can see that the edges are sharp and that's not very good. So click MM and increase Mask Feather. Let's say to about 5. Okay, great. Now everything seems fine. Let's scroll the timeline and see. It looks like we can see some of them at the end again. So let's go ahead and animate our masks. I'll set key on mask 3 and animate the mask path. Great. And then also other masks. That's it. Only a couple in the front and the scene is complete. Let's pre-render and see what we've got. Amazing, isn't it? Let's switch to full screen. That's just excellent. A romantic couple at a wild beach with no one and nothing else around. So let's go to the main comp, drag our clip into composition window and put it below projection scene 1. Okay guys, we've completed our task. Now let's make it a little bit more complicated. All right, moving on to the next example. So let's drag the new footage in. So here we have a beautiful house and there's a beautiful lawn all around it, but there are also some things we don't want in this footage, some stuff that spoils the view. So our task is to get rid of it. Let's reduce duration to 6 seconds. Okay, great. And pre-compose. Now we need to track the camera, but first we need to mask this vehicle that moves there in a kind of circle. When tracking camera, its movement can give us unwanted results. Okay, now I'll set the key on the mask path and change mask mode to subtract. And now I'll animate the mask to hide that lawnmower all throughout the footage. Like this. I'll put a key on every second. Okay, now let's see. Okay, great. Let's track our camera. I'll just wait a while.
you know, we don't need this mask anymore. And don't forget to check average error. Okay, now let's select the track points on the ground and show the camera tracker where the ground is. Like that. Great, that's enough. Now right click, set ground plane and origin. Good, let's create camera now. Okay, now I'll select both the camera and the footage and click Create Projection. I'll choose one copy. Just like before, I'll show hidden layers, select projector image, right click, time, freeze frame. Okay, cool. Now I'll, I'll open this and I'll just erase all the things I don't need with the clone stamp tool. Okay, now for these boxes. and also these things. Great! Now the lawn is clean and the scene looks much nicer. So let's get back to the composition window. Hide those layers. Now let's add a plain primitive. Stretch it like this to cover the entire area. That's good. Now let's mask all those things. And also this one. Cool. Let's check it. Very well. But let's just soften the mask edges a little bit. So select all masks. MM. Head over to the end of the comp to see better. Now I'll just increase the mask feather. Okay, very good. Now we just need to hide that lawnmower there as it moves. So for this, we will need to add another plane primitive. Let's drag it to the left to cover the vehicle. Well done. Now let's mask it. Now, as you can see guys, our projection is a little bit blurry. To fix this, I'll click here and choose Render Options and change Shadow Map Resolution to 4000. As you can see, everything is okay now and our projection looks really, really well. So let's animate the mask. Whoops, as you can see, something went wrong. Our projection doesn't match the video. We don't want that, so we need to do something about it. Let's delete this mask. And let's see. I'll press T to reduce opacity. Yes, as you can see, at the end of the video, 
projection is quite distorted. If it wasn't for this path, we wouldn't have even noticed it, but it's there and we need more precision. So what should we do? Let's try to correct the distortion using orientation values. No, it won't work that way. We need to move anchor point here so that during orientation, this part remains still. Let's move it over to the left so that the little red cube is next to the path. Okay, cool. Now open anchor point editor and move the anchor point to the top middle corner. Now we can orient the plane and, and fix that distortion. So let's do that. Yes, almost there. Okay, so let's set X to 5 and also set Y to 5. And let's see. Now it looks fine. Let's get back to the default opacity value, which is 100. Good. Now let's mask the vehicle. Okay, good. Turn this back on. Let's see if it comes out of the mask. Yes, at the end there it comes out. So let's fix that. And check it again. Okay. Now it's fine. But now we have another problem. As you can see, the projection gets darker at the end. This is because we are using the first frame of the clip as our projection image. And in the video, the light changes. But we fix that easily. So let's go to the main comp. Drag our clip into Composition window and put it below Projection Scene 1. Okay, now select Projection Scene 1 and add Curves effect to it. Now let's see where it starts to get darker. Let's add a key around here somewhere. Go to the end and make it a little brighter. Very well. Now it looks fine. And also, let's go to Projection Scene 1 and soften mask edges. That's about right. And that's it. Let's pre-render and see what's up. Quite impressive, isn't it? Just very clean and beautiful, like those things were not there at all. Okay guys, we're done with this one. Let's move on to the last piece. Okay, so I'll drag the clip here. This one will be a little bit more difficult since we have a shaky camera on our hands. But we'll try our best. So, we're going to try and remove those two stones. Let's reduce duration to 3 seconds. Right click, trim com to work area. 
then layer, and pre-compose. As you may have guessed, we should mask the cyclist. So let's go ahead and do that. I'll add key on the mask path, change mask mode to none. Okay, now let's animate. All right, let's see. Looks like we need to add more keys. Well done. Now everything is okay. I'll change mask mode to subtract. Track camera. Wait for a while. Okay. Now let's show the tracker where the ground is. Select the track points closer to the stones. Okay, I think that's enough. Right click to set ground plane and origin. And create camera. And that's it. We have ourselves a camera. Now we don't need this mask anymore. And now also let's create our projection. We only need one copy. Great. Now I'll just unhide these layers in projection scene one. Then I'll select the first frame off the clip. And then I'll go to the time section and freeze frame it. And make it a static image. Okay, now I'll head over here, open layer, and I'll erase these stones using the clone stamp tool. Now let me just increase the brush size. Yes, that's much better. I assume you guys know how to work with clone stamp tool. It's pretty easy.
and the stones have disappeared, as if they never existed. Okay, so now I'll hide these layers and go back to composition window. So I'll add a plain primitive. Let's also stretch it to make it bigger. And mask it. I'll switch this off to see where to mask. Okay, the stones aren't there anymore. Now let's add a key on the mask path. So I'll go forward on the timeline and check it. You can see that here we need to adjust the mask to cover the stones. Okay, that's good. Let's move on. Now let's adjust the mask again. Let's just check it here. Yes, a bit more adjustment needed. Uh, let's have a look again. Also, let's fix it here a little bit. Now it's fine. Also, we can adjust it here in this frame if we want to. Okay, guys, it looks like we finished animating our mask. Now let's have a look at what we get. Okay, seems like we should soften the mask edges a little bit. And the color gradually changes. We also should fix that. So I'll add mask feather. I'll make it, let's say about five. Okay, let's see. Great, now head over to render options and change shadow map resolution to 4000. This will make it look sharper. Cool. Now I'll go to the main com and drag the original clip to the composition window. Put it below projection scene one, okay? Then I'll select projection scene one and add the curves effect to it. Move time indicator to the first frame and add a key on curves. Okay, great. Now let's animate so our projection doesn't look any different from the clip. like this. Let's see. Maybe we should also add a key over here. Well done. I think it's ready. Let's pre-render and have a look. I think I see something there.
Yes, the top edges of the mask are too sharp. See? The feather doesn't work. That's because the mask has reached the edge of the plane. Let's try to fix that. Move the mask away from the edge of the plane as much as possible. Okay, now I'll go back to the main comp and pre-render it again. All right, looks like everything's fine now. Let's see it in full screen. Yes, we did a great job, you guys. Okay, so that's it for now. As you can see, guys, Projection 3D has ways you can use not only to create 3D projections, but also to remove objects from your video. And that's just great. So I hope this tutorial was useful for you and you just sharpen up your skills a little bit. So thank you for watching and we'll see you again in the next tutorial.